hundreds of years ago, before the white man came, all the land in America belonged to the Indians. The land of each tribe shaped the pattern of life and its beliefs. In the east lived Indian tribes who fished and hunted, who farmed and traded and made war. The earth was rich and the forests were alive with animals. In the west, the buffalo plains. Here, the Indian tribes were homeless, setting up camp as they followed the herds. In the sun-baked lands of the southwest were peaceful tribes who lived by farming. On the northwest coast, where rivers flowed through rain-drenched forests, the tribes were fishermen who lived in plenty. There were more than 300 tribes on the North American continent with their own languages and their own ways of living. Let us choose one tribe from each of the four regions we have named and see how they live. In the Northeast woodlands lived many different people. The Delaware, the Pequot, the Massachusetts, the Narragansett, the Algonquin, the Mohican, and many others. Here, too, lived the five great nations of the Iroquois, the Seneca, the Cayuga, the Onondaga, the Oneida, and the Mohawk. Five nations united in a league to which each tribe sent representatives. Each Iroquois nation had its own government and its own villages. Each family had its home, called the Longhouse. Here is the story of the Iroquois. Our families are ruled by the mother, and the mothers rule the tribe. Theirs is the village and the fields around it. They grow the corn and pound it into flour. They prepare our meat with foods from the field, like corn, squash, and beans. This they dry that we may eat during the winter. They are industrious and wise, the women of the Iroquois. Winter is a restless time for our people. Often there is famine. Sometimes there is war. We put on war paint upon the vote of the Great Council of Fifty, the elected sachems of our people. torture and kill. In the winter, we must eat sparingly of the corn that dries in the long house. Evil spirits lurk to enter our bodies. And even the body of our chief, the head of our clan, is not safe from them. For our clan mother, the sickness of our chief is a great sorrow, for he is of her family. Our warriors sit in sadness and repair their snowshoes and long for the day when the sun will win the sky again. Our women sew and listen to the wind that fills the night with wild dreams. Some dreams, we believe, bring power against the evil spirits that cause sickness. Men who dream of the strange false faces become members of their great society. With spirit masks, with tortoise shell rattles, and with offerings of the white ash of the sacred tobacco, they try to appease the evil ones who torment our troubled chief. of 
his sacred tobacco, Almighty Shaga Joa. You who live the brim of the earth, you who stand towering, caring for the people. Powerful are the spirit masks and the prayers and offerings of the false faith society. But sometimes the evil spirits are more powerful still. The women of our clan will nominate a new chief. The clan mother must name a son, a brother, or a sister's son. Each woman speaks about the one who has been named. But he will receive the antlers of his office only after the clan mother has journeyed to other clans and finally to the Council of Fifty to get their approval. When the snows melt and the earth lies warm in the spring sun, our women till the soil and plant the corn. In each mound, they place an offering to the mighty god Shagajoa. The fish will decay and enrich the earth, and the plants will be heavy with ears of corn. So lived the people of the five nations of the Iroquois in the eastern woodlands many years ago. On the vast central prairie of North America live the Plains Indians, tribes who follow the buffalo, the Osage, the Pawnee, the Dakota, the Arapaho, the Cheyenne, the Crow, the Blackfoot, and many others. Let us choose one of the Plains tribes, the Sioux. Their horses, brought to America by Spaniards many years before, made these western tribes masters of the plain. This is our world. The great power Wakanda has sent us all the four-legged creatures of the earth, all the winged beings, and all the plants. I go to call the hunters of my tribe. As long as the grass shall grow to feed the buffalo, our people will never go hungry. We set up our teepees at sunset last night, and already our scouts have found a herd. Now we will have buffalo meat for food. We will have bones for new weapons. Leather thongs for bowstrings, skins for moccasins and clothing, and skins for new tents. The buffalo brings all things to the people of the Sioux. Now the women must come for the hides, the meat, and the bones. 
They'll bring everything back to camp. The meat is dried in the hot sun. It helps feed us during the winter. Our women grind the dried meat and mix it with dried berries and herbs to make a food called pemmican. It does not spoil, and it is easy for a brave to carry when he goes on the hunt or when he goes to war. We carry the pemmican in pouches made of the skin of the buffalo, which has been dried and softened. It takes many days to prepare a skin, especially a large one that can be used for a teepee or for a robe. Such is women's work. For the men, we hunt, we protect our families from enemies, and in all ways, we live as the great power Wakanda bids us. tribes who lived in piled up villages, which the Spaniards called Pueblos. The Hopi and the Zuni in the desert, the Tiwa and the Kiris in the river valleys. Our village was ancient when my father's father was a boy. It is built of mud and stone, house upon house, like the honeycomb of the bee. Our people live by farming and we wear clothes made from white bowls of the cotton plant. Up the ladder and down the ladder is the only way in and out of our houses. There are no openings in the thick walls of the first level. Each upper level is stepped back with the working space in front. At night, we pull up the ladders and sleep without fear. Today, the music of our flute calls to the heavens. For today, we plant the sacred corn sent us by the corn maidens. This is my father's prayer. Mother, father, you who belong to the great beings, you who belong to the storm clouds, you will help me. I am ready to put down yellow corn and also blue corn and red corn and white corn. I am going to plant today. If the gods bring rain, the corn will grow and bear fruit. We dry the corn and grind it up. We have many kinds of corn, and my mother knows many ways to cook it. I like the sweet corn best when it's fresh from the fields. Then we have beans and squash, too. The women mix cornmeal with water and with the sacred salt. I have gone with my father to bring the salt from the lake of the salt woman. My mother bakes many kinds of bread. The people of the Tiwa village make beautiful pottery. The woman who is most skillful of all teaches her art to her granddaughter. It is a great honor. She teaches her where to find the best clay. How much water must be used to moisten it? What forms are best for different needs? It will be many years before her pupil will have fingers which can smooth the wet clay like this and give it shape. to be as skilled as her grandmother. By then, perhaps she will have a daughter of her own. 
and she will teach her daughter the ancient art. She will teach her how to paint each vessel with a different pattern, the patterns of her people, the special patterns of her family. vessels have been baked in the fire, one kind is useful for holding water, and others for holding dried corn, for baking and for eating. In the great northwest live tribes like the Quinault, the Chinook, the Klickitat, the Skokomish, the Macaw. Many of them lived along the shallow bays of the Pacific Ocean, where fish were abundant. Their boats were huge dugout logs. Their clothes were made of shredded bark and rushes. They lived in great plank houses. In this abundant land, the people competed fiercely with one another and were much given to boasting. I do not boast as others do in my tribe. Yet my fish are always the largest. The waters in the forest are good to my people. The salmon run thick in the streams, the halibut in the bays. The smoked meat keeps for many days. When we tire of fish, there are deer and bear in the forest. Our boats are made of cedar logs soft and straight-grained. The wood takes shape from the pounding of our sharp stones. A man's craft comes from his father in the same way that he will someday receive his father's office and his father's wealth. Our headman, Kituk, has the greatest wealth of our tribe. So that all may envy his great riches, he invites the headmen of other tribes to a potlatch a ceremony of giving. He has gathered all his wealth about him. How rich are the money beads that he gives away. Lucky is the wife of the chief who gives them. But all know that someday the young chief must hold a potlatch for Kituk and return even greater gifts or his name will be disgraced and great will be the shame of his mother and of all his family. Gift by gift, our chief gives away all that he owns. The greatest gift of all is a fine canoe, smoothly hewn and richly painted. The young chief must grow very rich if he is to match Kituk's presence. And by that time, our chief will be ready for another potlatch, which will put the other tribes to shame again. At last, Kituk has nothing left. The potlatch ends with a dance of giving and receiving. Kituk has proved his great wealth. Now he will wait for the other chiefs to prove theirs. among more than 300 tribes that peopled the continent. Hunters, warriors, and farmers of the eastern woodlands. Peaceful Pueblo dwellers of the southwest. Skillful buffalo hunters of the midwestern plains. And wealthy fishermen of the abundant northwest. These people lived in ways so astonishingly different from one another that the wealth of legend and ancient lore they left us still lives today 
as part of America's great heritage of the past.